Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to NanoCef. In the last video, we set up our front end project that is going to build all the files for the front end. And we set that up with a little command, scaffolds a whole project in here. It's based on view.js and TypeScript. So in this video, I just want to kind of go over what all this happy crappy is. And maybe then we'll, we'll kind of tear it down, minimize it a little bit before we actually get started and do the thing we actually want to do. So, start from the bottom here. Vite is the thing that this is all based on. It's the, it's the, the tool that builds your project. The, it runs the TypeScript compiler. It runs this dev server. It bundles all the files up because we've got a bunch of you know dependencies and node modules here. It's the thing that pulls all the code out of here and bundles it up into, you know, just a few files in your distribution. So like maybe one or you know, a couple of JavaScript files and some CSS files. And you can configure it, you know, you can, there's plugins that you can put in to extend its functionality in one way or another, but really you don't have to worry about touching this shit. Same with this one. This is TypeScript config. This configures how the TypeScript compiler works. You can, just like you can configure the C++ compiler for language version and a whole bunch of other options on how it compiles your code. You can do the same for TS config. We don't want to touch it. Possible, we don't want to touch it at all, but at least m as minimal as possible. But, you know, here you got this main TS config and it references, you know, subfiles. And then you can go into these subfiles and whenever you have a problem with TypeScript, if it ever happens, you, you Google the problem and then you go to Stack Overflow or whatever and it tells you to put this thing in your TS config and you do that and then it fixes it. That's that's the extent of this. Okay, package.json, I already talked about in the last video. This tells us what dependencies we have, all of our top level dependencies, the things that we actually want. In here, when you run the install command, it generates another JSON file called package lock. Dot json this is every single package including all like for example all the things that view depends on is in here and all the things that those things depend on it all goes in here and it, it all goes in with a very specific version number you see these version numbers here they got this little carrot that means you can get like a version that's close to this and it'll be okay give me whatever's close but when you get the lock it locks you into a specific version and that's good because once you get your program working you don't want to have it such that next time you pull in your dependencies it pulls in a slightly different version and breaks everything that's, that's something you don't want to happen that's why we got package lock that locks you down index i think we know what index is right that's the html file and you might be looking at this and saying well holy shit like that's a lot of stuff on here for such a such a small file and this is only a shell really so the build system is going to take this and transform it a little bit and spit out an index uh, but what that index does is it's going to load this script called main.ts and the script is actually going to at runtime build the document object model the dom up for you not the sub the dom is going to be built up here so most of it isn't in here this thing here, this div with the ID app, this is where everything is going to get jammed into. So like if you look at main.ts, we're going to import some shit. We're going to create the app, the view app, and then we're going to mount it onto the element with the ID app. So that mounts onto here. What does it mount? Well, it's going to mount, let me see here. We imported app from app.view and we created our app with that. So it's going to mount this thing. This is the actual page, the top level content that gets stuffed into your web page. And now we can see some of the stuff that we actually see here. Like, oh, there's the donkey fart box. That's that's right here. And, you know, there's a couple links, home and about. And uh, we got a couple links here and here. So, yeah, there's where there's where the stuff is actually. And it's in these dot view files. Funnily enough, that's where the magic happens. And there, it's a nice format. I like it. It's got three parts. It's got a script part. You put all your your script in here. In our case, it's going to be TypeScript. All your logic and your template. That's where your you know HTML, basically your HTML goes into. And then here you put your CSS. And I like this better than the like the, the style of where you got a .css file, you got a .html file, and they're all kind of scattered hither dither. Here, all the style that affects the component you're working with on the view you're working with goes in the same file as the markup which goes in the same file as the script. It's all together. It's cohesive. We don't have incohesive code. We have cohesive code. That's what we like. 
so let's take a little step back now. Let's look at this source folder, which contains app.view. It also contains some other view files. Some of them are in the views folder. Some of them are in the components folder. So what is the what is the distinction? They're all the same kind of file. They all have you know the three parts. You can omit some parts if you don't need them, but in general, you're going to have script, template, and style. App.view, you think of that as your top level layout. So like imagine that VS Code was a view application. This title bar here with file and edit, that would go into app.view. And like this status bar on the bottom, that would go into app.view. And you know, like maybe this little selector here, but the content of what you're actually working on, those, that would be like its own view, its own page. So you'd have a view for the text editor, and maybe you'd have like another view for your extension viewer. But like no matter what view you have active, the title bar is always going to be here. The status bar is always going to be here. So those things would go into the top level layout. And then your layout would contain a place to say, okay, now stick the actual page content in here. The actual, you know, thing that we are working on right now. So you got your app.view, you got your views, which is like one per page of your UI, I guess you could call it, or screen. And then you got components. So you can break down, you know, parts of your UI into reusable components. And that's basically what Viewdify is, the thing that we're going to add in next. It's just a toolbox of components that you can stick into your views. But you ever, if you ever find yourself with like a, a piece of UI that you are going to reuse in different places, maybe with slightly different you know variations, you can factor out that logic, that markup, and that scripting into its own component as a .view file. You got your top level layout, you got your pages or your screens, and then you got your components. And this all lives in the source folder. And everything in source basically is going to get pre-processed and bundled up. It's everything in source plus index.html. Those things get all bundled up and chewed up and then spat into dist. And the other folder we got here is public. Everything you put in public just gets copied as is into disk. So it's just going to copy these files into dist without any processing whatsoever. Like for example, if we look at dist, we got favicon.icon and we got in public favicon that just got copied from here to here. But if you look at like in source assets, we got like an SVG file, that's an image. You won't find that anywhere in dist because it's it's been bundled up and stuffed into another file, probably into this CSS file or maybe this one, I don't know. So like if you wanted to include some CSS into your project, um, you could write it as a file in source, and then you would have to go somewhere, like main.ts, and you would import it, and that would get it all bundled up. Or you could just stick it into public, and then you could reference it directly in, I don't know, in like your index.html. You could put like a link to the style sheet or whatever, I don't know. Now the last thing, and arguably the most important, which is kind of strange that I left it to last, but uh, in source you got main.ts. So this is the thing, if we remember, in index.html, that's what's referenced here. So this is basically your entry point. Just like in C, you have a main. Here you have a main as well. And so this is the one that gets the whole ball rolling. And I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It just creates the view app based on the top level view that we give it. And then you can you know, plug in any other optional components, like the view router. And once everything's ready, you mount that onto your app and then it all gets executed and rendered. I guess if you're being super observant, you might re you might have noticed, wait a minute, Chili, you didn't talk about this one here. So this is the router. In app, you see we got these links. One link goes to the root and another one goes to about. So these are like kind of URLs. And the router is what says, hey, this URL references home view. So that references, you know, this file here. And this URL references this one here, the about view. That's all that is. It's just kind of mapping links, URLs for links to the actual views that have the content for those pages. That's all that is. And I mean, honestly, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna be doing like multiple screens or anything. So it's not really necessary. I just, I just threw it in here just for shits and giggles. 
All right, that was a lot of talking. Let's do let's do something at least in this video. So you might notice we got this like weird thing on the bottom, and I don't like it. There's a couple of reasons I don't like it. One of the reasons is that it doesn't work because I didn't implement the stuff in Ceph that you need to get it to work. Uh, but it is the dev tools. You can use dev tools without this thing in your app. But I want to get rid of it. I don't like it in here. So how do we get rid of it? It's the dev tools. So that would be this bad boy here. And I mean, you could manually like edit this file and then run the install command again. And I think that probably does fine. But you could also do it like explicitly on the command line. You could do npm remove vite plugin view tool. And if you run this command, it should, yeah, disappears from dev dependencies. It's going to disappear from package lock. And it is going to disappear from node modules. So it's gone now. Uh, now, little tricky thing. It's actually referenced in the vite config. It's referenced in here. See? The Visual Studio is going to get a little angry because it says, hey, wait a minute, I don't know this, this thing, it, it ain't around. I can't find this thing you're talking about. So just get rid of it in here. And then if we run dev again, see, we got our page here. And there's no more weird jank shit on the bottom here. Now, I could, I'm going to be real with you. Like, I could go over, you know, the whole layout of all of these view files. There's a bunch of them here. But I'm not going to. Who cares? Uh, we don't need them. Let's erase them all. Let's just nuke the hell out of them. Get rid of all these things. We'll leave the components folder because we might use it. I don't know. It's not impossible. Uh, but we'll get rid of the views. So we're not going to use separate views to begin with. Uh, router. You know what? Screw it. We're not going to use router. We can always bring it back if we need it. But uh, probably going to stick to just one single page here. And let's lose all these assets. We don't need them either. So here's our ultra minimalist web page. No assets, no components, no router, no views, just app.view and main.ts. Now, this no longer exists. This no longer exists. Well, no, nope, that's gone too. And we're not going to do that. Let's get rid of that. So this is all we need. Now, this should still work. Okay. I'm probably working. I mean, it's hard to tell. Ah, one thing I didn't get rid of. Get rid of this favicon. We don't need that shit. Index.html. We don't want it to try to load that. Yeah, replace this favicon icon link with a dummy link. Empty data. Sweet. Might as well fix the title. In app.view, we need the classic. There it is. Now, we need some style for the classic. So that's all the stuff we had in our previous little test page. I don't think it's going to exactly work, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah, that didn't, didn't work at all. Terrible. And the reason why, well, if we look at the styles that we're applying here, the styles that we applied to the header, they're working fine, right? The color, the size, the font family, I think it's... It all checks out. But the other stuff, like the, why aren't we centered? Well, that stuff is applied to the body like our justification, our alignment. And the background color, that's also on the body. But the body is outside of our boy here, our app.view. And the thing about this is, this is a very nice feature, is that we can scope our styles. We can say, okay, the style in here, I want it to only apply to this component. Don't leak it out and screw up things that are totally unrelated to the thing I'm trying to style. But in our case, we actually want to make a global style. So there's a couple ways we could do it. We could make a separate CSS file, put it in assets, reference it in main, and that could be our global style. I think we could even just do it from within this component, which is like a dirtier way of doing it, but it'll still work, probably. Let's try it. Let's try the dirty stuff. Let's try to be dirty. So if I just do another style block, because you can have multiple blocks of the same type, and this one is not scoped. That means that this will apply just to everything. And there we go. We did it. There we go. Quick and dirty. Let's say you wanted to be super vigilant. You want to be correct. You want to be a good citizen of the interwebs. Create a new file. We'll call that one globals.css. Copy this BS from here. Cut it out. Put it in here. Still a little funky on the, on the tabulation, but there we go. You can get rid of this. Now, if we just do a little test here. Yeah, it's back to where it was. Because, I mean, we made this file, but it's not referenced anywhere. So we can go into main.ts and we can go import assets 
globals.css. There you go. Now that should be pulled in and built, bundled up, and it should be re reflected in the web page. There it is. There you go. So there's your there's two ways of skinning that same cat. It's good practice to put the style for this header inside of your view file because the, the header itself is inside the view file. You keep all the stuff that's together, keep it together. But for the global stuff, yeah, put it in its own kind of global CSS. Let it chill out here. Don't don't attach it to any specific dot view file. That's a good idea too. I don't know. You do you. But that's gonna do it for this video. In the next video, we are gonna pull in Beautify view component framework and that has all the sexy little doodads all the widgets and the layout and the styles and the themes that is going to make your stuff not look like ass which if you remember that that was the whole point of this exercise here so i'm going to pull that in and um, you know play around with it a little bit i don't know maybe make some kind of uh simple demonstration there we'll see how far we get until then thanks for watching Hope you enjoy the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more NanoSafe.